No matter what you collect, if you keep at it long enough, eventually you'll get lucky and find something special. That happened to my wife and I, who enjoy collecting and restoring antique sewing machines, when we were fortunate enough to purchase this beautiful sewing cabinet from a very nice lady in Southern California. As great as it looks, the real treasure is inside. A 1929 Eldridge two-spool sewing machine made by the National Sewing Machine Company. She was in such good condition that restoration only took 15 hours, really short for a machine that's nearly a century old. Let's move in a little closer to see what makes this gem so special. Like all the machines in our collection, we named her. She's Maisie May. She's a treadle machine, factory modified, to be electrically driven. The machine itself is almost unchanged from the original 1913 national design, and in it you can see the classic late 18th century Singer body shape and the gold filigree work that dominated the market. Later models in the 1930s supported more Art Deco decals. What makes Maisie so unique among sewing machines is that she is the only design that can use an entire spool of thread instead of the bobbin under the bed of the machine. This means that instead of being limited to 30 yards, like in a normal bobbin, she can hold as much as 125 under the bed. An added advantage is that if both the top spool and the bottom spool are loaded with the same amount. The sewer always knows how much thread is left under the bed because it should be the same amount is left on top. The only problem is that these canisters are one of the rarest of all sewing machine parts. So if you're thinking about buying one of these machines, make sure it comes with the proper canister. In spite of being a century old, she still sews a tight lock stitch. When we were opening up the drawers inside the cabinet, we were lucky enough to discover a second treasure. This metal box filled with a wide selection of attachments. Back in these days, Attachments for sewing machines, which couldn't do zigzags or any of the modern hems that we can do today, were like apps for modern cell phones. These extended the capabilities of any machine. And there was a big industry of people, independent inventor, inventors, working to develop even more complicated devices than this. We're looking forward to figuring out how to use these and understanding what they can do. The stitch regulator is numbered from zero on the extreme inside, which is set for five stitches per inch, to 10 on the outside, which equates to about 16 stitches per inch. She seems to work best at setting five, which is around 10 stitches per inch. If you happen to be lucky enough to get one of these machines, you might want to check under the knee switch which is inside the cabinet on the right hand side. Some of these had a pad of asbestos under the switch to protect the wood. This needs to be professionally removed. Another issue is with the motor, which ran clockwise and drove the machine through a friction drive counterclockwise. This is the way the wheel has to turn for proper operation. If you need to replace this motor, the fact is most modern sewing machine motors run counterclockwise so that if you use the same friction drive it's going to drive the wheel clockwise and the machine will try to run backwards and won't work at all. If that's the problem, if you have to change the motor, the simple solution is, is instead of using a friction drive, use a belt drive and that will take care of everything. As beautiful as she is, very sadly, Maisie's electrification marks the end of the golden age of sewing machines, where each one was designed and decorated as a work of art. Within 10 years, manufacturers had switched over to machines designed from the ground up for electric motors, following the philosophy that function is more important than form, with the result that beauty was forced to yield to practicality. Still, all is not lost. Because they were built to last, gems like Maisie are still with us. Each stitch they sew today links us to the glory days of sewing machines. They may not be able to sew stitches in the shape of little fish like modern machines, but they clothe the world and even after a century's use are still able as ever 
to sew dresses for little girls or whatever else is required. I hope you enjoyed this video and while you wait for the next one, we'll pay a visit to my main website, waynesthisandthat.com. As always, thanks for watching.